So what, what I believe is there's never been a better time to learn a new skill. There's never been a better time to start a new company. Um, history has shown us that uh, in times of challenge and despair, it leads to discovery and innovation. And I think invest in yourself and believe in your ability to succeed. We have the pleasure of welcoming Brian Moya today to our interview series. I'm your host Anushka Rajesh from the People Hum team. Before we begin, just a quick introduction of People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view integrated human capital management automation platform, the winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and video channel, which receives upwards of 200,000 visitors a year and publish around two interviews with well-known names globally every month. And now for our guest, Brian Moyer is President and CEO of the Greater National Technology Council, the largest technology trade association in Tennessee. Prior to that, he served as Executive VP and CIO for Gaffey Healthcare and HealthTech S3. Brian is a self-taught software developer and has founded and grown multiple technology companies over the past 25 years, won numerous awards for leading the fastest growing company in Middle Tennessee and is named on several patents. We're extremely happy and honored to have someone of the state here today on our interview series. Welcome, Brian. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Um, it's an honor. It's absolutely our pleasure. So, Brian, you've had quite an exciting journey. So can you tell us a little bit about your greatest learning experiences so far? Well, as you heard, I'm fortunate to have had um, a broad experience with a variety of startups and have worn many different hats over the years, um, including founder, advisor, programmer, chief technology officer, chief information officer, CEO. And during this experience or this journey, I think the most important lesson I've probably learned has been the importance of lifelong learning. Um, really, gone are the days of graduating high school or college and working at the same place for the rest of your career. The world is constantly changing and success is um, dependent upon one's ability to learn new skills and adapt. I know that I've had to reinvent myself many times over the years, and every time I did that, I was forced to step outside of my comfort zone and learn a new skill and ended up becoming a better person in the process. That, that's great. And I absolutely agree with you on that one. It's a, a journey, a continuous journey without a start and an end point. So uh, thank you for that enlightening explanation. Uh, also, Brian, what are the main values that have really helped you excel as a leader? Leadership um, is really not something that's bestowed with a title. Uh, just because you have the title of supervisor or manager or CEO doesn't mean you're a leader. Uh, in my experience, leadership has to be earned. And it's earned by focusing on the success of your employees rather than on your own personal success. No leader um, will ever be truly successful unless those you are leading are successful. I think you have to be, as a leader, clear about what is expected. Lay out the goals and then let your employees figure out the best way to achieve them. Um, hire smart people and get out of their way and let them do their work. Um, I, I think you have to lead by example. Um, by that, I, I mean you, you must be willing to put in the hours and make the same commitments and be held to the same accountability as you ask of your team. And, and lastly, I believe that a positive attitude is infectious. Uh, planning for the worst, but expecting the best. Look for the best in every employee and help them become or help them believe that uh, they can achieve their goals. That's so true. Absolutely true. Thank you. Um, so, you know, Brian, as a person, you've always been for change and disruption. So what, in your opinion, and what, according to you, is the all-inclusive term, the future of work? That is a really good question. The future of work is talked about a lot these days. I read about it almost daily. Um, really, 
our world is fundamentally changing. Um, technology has um, shattered barriers and, and shrunk the world. Um, it's reducing uh, distances between industries and societies. And really that's never been more evident than with our recent experience with the global pandemic and being forced to work from home. And it's really opened our eyes to what is possible by leveraging technology. Technology is also eliminating jobs through automation. In fact, this decade will host the most dramatic workforce transition ever seen. Um, in a world that's driven by devices and technology, I think it's very important that we remember that the future isn't about technology, but about people. In a recent World Economic Forum Future of Jobs report, there's a report on the future of jobs. It suggested that by 2022, which is not that long off, no less than 54% of all employees will require significant reskilling or upskilling. It's, it's really no different from the adjustments that were required following each of the previous industrial revolutions. People are anxious about this and the change, and yet when you look at history, it's, it's really no different than what we've, we've lived through and succeeded through uh, in, in generations past. In this case, I think, Technology has a significant role to play in the reskilling and upskilling process, and also in providing new job opportunities to those that have been displaced. Technology um, has been called by many an equalizer, and I believe that to be true. I think it can play a role in reducing racial and gender and economic inequalities but the focus has to be on the skills that a person has rather than what degree or certificate they have. Absolutely. So you're saying technology is used as an enabler and won't really replace the human touch in organizations, right? Yes. That's great. That's a nice perspective there. Um, so, you know, Brian, do you think uh, AI and automation will really contribute uh, when it comes to people and people management of an organization? Do you think it can help in that aspect of management? I think it can help. I think software can assist with some management tasks. It's, it's never going to replace leadership. Um, and what we need to make sure of is that um, any automation and AI tools don't inadvertently lead to racial and gender bias. The tools need to be carefully crafted and tested. You read a lot of concern about that. Um, some of it is maybe um, overblown. Uh, some of it is probably legit, but certainly whatever software exists was, is only as good as the people that program it. And we just need to, to make sure that we do not uh, build into uh, any of those, any of those uh, products uh, any of the racial or gender bias that uh, may have existed. Um, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, automation that's taken place in HR these days. Um, and it's, it's led to great efficiencies, but it's also led to, um, it's also led to some problems. And many people I know, if, you haven't crafted your resume in the proper way and it's being read automatically through some piece of software that doesn't find the exact keyword that it's been programmed to look for, you may never get that opportunity to speak to a human and to sell yourself and to talk about uh, the value that you would bring to an organization. Um, and so some of that is educating the people that, that program that software so that, like we said before, they're looking at the skills rather than just the degrees or the credentials or the, um, or the certifications that you may have earned, because that doesn't always uh, equate to skills and ability to do a great job. Um, I'm really not completely familiar with your software. I would love to learn more. 
I was listening or heard um, somebody describe just the other day a piece of software that they developed that um, is designed to be used in um, in large organizations to uh, try to using AI and automation to try and document the skills that the employees have as they're doing the work, as they're developing products and they're turning in their work, um, that it would, uh, it would look for different things that they've done and document their skills so that um, as an employer, as a manager, you not only um, know what was on the resume for this employee, but you also know what skills they have and have developed since coming to work there. Uh, which I thought was a wonderful idea and would be extremely beneficial in trying to manage your team. That's absolutely true. Uh, although, you know, these softwares can actually help HR managers and employees channelize their uh, focus and energies on something that's more innovative and productive, there can be certain shortcomings which need to, as you mentioned, need to be um, yeah, noted and, you know, need to be rectified rather. So that I yeah. really agree, yeah. No, I was just gonna agree with you. Um, we, we need to use the tools and we need to take advantage of the efficiencies that can come, but we just need to be aware that they're, um, it's not a perfect solution and it requires uh, overview and it requires management of the software just like management of your team and make sure that um, we, don't, uh, we don't allow the software to overlook um, in, important things that, uh, that need to be pointed out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Brian, uh, just to kind of wrap up this interview, do you have any last sound bites you'd like to leave our audience? You know, it's um, the last few months have been um, very interesting. Our, the world as we know it has, has literally been turned upside down over the past few months. And, and yet um, in the midst of this, I have a unique perspective because as a a technology focused trade association. I'm interacting with technology companies every day. And I've just been inspired over and over by the resiliency of the human spirit and the innovation that has sprung up as a result of these challenges. Um, so what, what I believe is there's never been a better time to learn a new skill. There's never been a better time to start a new company. Um, History has shown us that uh, in times of challenge and despair, it leads to discovery and innovation. And I think if I was going to leave a, a soundbite, it's invest in yourself and believe in your ability to succeed. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful last message for our audience. Um, Brian, it's been a wonderful time talking to you and I, it's been such an enriching experience for me and I'm sure it'll be for uh, our viewers too. I'm really glad and uh, I'm thankful that you took out your time to share your views with us. So thank you so much for that, Brian. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure.